On today's episode, we got to break down that Thursday night matchup. A lot of huge storylines took place last night. Break down the news and the injuries, the rest of the games, and a fantasy face-off between the three of us. You do not want to miss this week's Wheel of Shame. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Hey, this is Darren Waller, tied in for the Las Vegas Raiders. I am the Wallerus, and you are listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Goo goo ka Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Back for Friday, September 9th. Here we are, gentlemen. The season has begun. Oh. We've that got more matchups on the show today. Oh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a lot of fun watching football. Got a little sloppy there in the middle. A little bit. Uh, we have lots to talk about from last night's game. Because that's what we do. We talk about football. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean yeah. Re the reactions were strong. There is the, As strong as they get. And, I mean, you are right. There is a lot to take away from this game. Uh, but it is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. In honor of the many who have supported this show over at jointhefoot.com. Every Friday, we take a second to give something away. This year, we're going to be giving away $100 gift cards to fantasychamps.com uh, to people that support the show. And today's winner over on Patreon is Brittany. That's that's <laughs> just, the name. Just Brittany. Just Brittany. Hope you don't have a last name if you're listening and you're Brittany. Yeah. Now, now it is not spelled the Spears way. Okay. Thanks, Mike. I'm just letting people know. So it's yeah. not Britney Spears. Is no, what you're it's not. Uh, Britney won a $100 gift card to FantasyChamps.com. Thank you for supporting the show. Get a trophy. Get a belt. Get a championship ring. Yeah, I mean, it's those are good choices. Over there. Yeah. yeah, that was intense. Uh, but let's jump right into that Thursday night recap. The Bills absolutely pummeled the Rams 31-10. to 10. Uh, so much for the Sean McVay 5-0 and on opening game. So much for the 33, it's not a trap. 33 points a game was their average in openers. But there are storylines aplenty. Josh Allen is very good. <sighs> good. Excellent. I mean, goodness gracious. Pretty much a perfect game. And uh, without Isaiah McKenzie's mistake, maybe would have been uh, one of the better like completion uh Records, like sure? quantity of completions to start the game, 26 for 31, 297 and three, scored on the ground, was the leading rusher for the team, 10 for 56 and a touchdown. And, you know, Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis were both huge for fantasy players, eight for 122 and a touchdown for Diggs, four for 88 and a touchdown for Gabe Davis. The other wide receivers in Buffalo, we'll talk about it briefly, uh, Isaiah McKenzie and Jameson Crowder both had opportunities. One more target for Crowder. McKenzie had a touchdown, two for 19 and a touchdown, and then that drop that ended up as an interception. Mm -hmm. um, do you think this is the way that split will break down, or was this a product of McKenzie coming off the injury? Uh, I th uh, So I'm, I'm glad you bring up the injury because it, we need to be aware that it could be kind of limiting his snaps, but I, I actually think this is how it's going to go moving forward. He was... Uh, a full participant in you know in in practice so and it made sense for for how the game went Isaiah McKenzie is a smaller guy to have him out there on 100% of you know three wide receiver uh, sets probably is a mistake and they paid Jameis Crowder who's a good wide receiver so I do think that they will probably split that role to some degree making that role v not valuable unless you get a touchdown uh the a couple players you would have been disappointed in starting on the Buffalo side, 
Uh, we'll start with Dawson Knox, who only had one reception in this game. I think he had to block a lot. Yeah, on two targets. And then Devin Singletary was great when given man. the ball. What happened? Oh, I watched man. this game, and I was so excited because the beginning <laughs> of the game was all Devin he Singletary. He was 8 for 48, so he was, you know, uh, great. Six a carry, uh, two catches, but really just not needed that much they left him in the beginning of the game in on basically all situations through that first drive or two and then then all of a sudden you saw uh zach moss get involved he was the second man up and had a like a decent play of then eventually rookie sensation james cook comes oh, in oh man he fumbles got, his first snap he, and is done he got wilson yeah so hopefully he gets an opportunity in the future. But then, yikes! But then, from then on out, the rest of the game, it was like all Zach Moss, who was carrying his tuba around like he usually does. <laughs> six for fifteen on the ground, but oh, had you don't six like that? catches. So, um, you know, I don't know what that game plan was. Moss was definitely the second man up, even before the Cook uh, fumble. But Singletary looked good, just not a lot of work. Ten total touches in the game. That's been the story of. His career. His career. Yeah. And they <laughs> – I'm with Jason. You, they kept forcing Zach Moss onto the field, and I don't know why. You, I mean, not like running back receptions, they don't always turn into a whole bunch of yardage, but six catches for 21 yards is absurd. Yeah, and six carries for 15, I so mean, not efficient. But they won the game. They yeah, won yeah, yeah. the 10, so you can't, really, you can't really blame them or say that this won't happen again. It's well, just, it was 10-10. to 10 Zach Moss did fumble, half, too, right? in this game. Yeah. So, uh, on the other side, there was only one player you could have been happy with for the Rams. The offense was bad. Three picks for Matthew Stafford. This was the second. He had a QBR of 20. This was seven sacks he took with a defensive line from the Bills that were rushing four and sacked him seven times, rushing four and dropping seven. Um, this was the second lowest fantasy performance in Matthew Stafford's Rams career. Uh, tons of stories to talk about here. The one player you would have been thrilled with, it was Cooper Cup yet again, 13 for 128 and 1. Yep, still good. Uh, beyond that, we can start in the running back room. Okay. Uh, Cam Akers was non-existent. Woof. Oh, like, man. Like the Isaiah McKenzie, you can – the the, the oh. Akers truthers out there, which yep. obviously are not sitting at this table. We've kind of been off Cam Akers through the offseason. But those who want to support him will bring up that he was dealing with a hamstring issue, and so maybe he was limited in it, not just because of the Achilles injury, but you know that he was just going to be mixed in a little bit as they work him back from the hamstring issue. The, yeah, do I push the panic alarm button for people? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, so is that for the for the lights. Oh, I'm not supposed. To, I think uh, I think Al has to turn well, that off. I got a little scared. We got to tighten that up. Oh, uh, now we got party now lights party. going on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why are we celebrating Cam Akers That's, not being on was the that, field? Was that my fault, Al? It was, but okay. I'll, I'll, I like, was going to say I'll take the blame, but I just gave you the blame, so I can't take it. <laughs> well, sorry. I'm so used to turning it off, you know? Yeah. All right. So, I didn't know that that would make it party in here. So, Daryl Henderson, if you didn't watch the game, Henderson started. It was looking like it was all Daryl Henderson. Cam Akers did get on the field. He received three carries for a grand total of zero yards, which not not all three carries, I would say, were Akers' fault. Like, I mean, he was getting crushed at the line of scrimmage. He just The burst didn't look like it was there for Cam Akers. On top of that, the rookie running back, Kyron Williams, who that wasn't a high draft capital pick, but we all liked him coming out of Notre Dame, uh, he got injured on the opening kickoff. And now it's a high ankle sprain. So, I mean, he's basically toast. But I'm saying, you're, I think we're lucky that Cam Akers got three carries. I bet the plan was going to be Henderson and Kyron and let Akers just take the whole game off. It could have been. But uh, right now, Daryl Henderson, you know, a must draft pick at the end of all of your drafts and might be the starter. So this was a game that was a offensive disaster for the Rams. And they're going to have much better days than this. I mean, Twitter would tell you they're going 0-17. Matthew Stafford's sure. arm is, is broken. Um, it's a disaster. And we would tell you they've got Sean McVay. They'll figure it out. But So let me ask you this question on Henderson. You drafted him late. It cost you nothing. Are you 
rolling the dice saying I did it, I found the late round guy or you or looking at the situation of Cam Akers was coming off of the training camp injury, going to be worked back in. Well, he could be the primary guy and do you try to go trade Henderson to the Akers manager right now? I don't. Or something. I don't. He was, you know, he didn't have a great fantasy game. Now he hit that 13 carry threshold that we're keeping our yeah. eyes on. So that's Also had five catches. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he was very involved and I want to have the main running back on this offense. So, so you're, you're going to gamble and keep him? I'm going to gamble at least another week because okay. I think if they're bringing Cam Akers along slowly, he's going to have another good week. If he comes out next week, I think is the Falcons, it if is. I'm not wrong. So, you know, look, this offensive line is the biggest story for me from uh, the, the Rams. Like, I'm worried about their entire offensive line being able to just, you know, they lost to Andrew Whitworth, their all-world left tackle, and it looked like they – didn't have a left tackle, uh, but against the Falcons, they should have more time in the pocket. They should be able to run the ball better. So if you want to trade Daryl Henderson, I think you're better off doing it after next week. Yeah, I wouldn't trade him. I okay. it, I have zero confidence that Cam Akers gets back to a form that represents a team commitment to him. That That's all I'll say. And we've, we've been off of him. Uh, the concerns about the Achilles. The Achilles injuries have won every battle with running backs historically in terms of taking them off the field. So uh, lots of concern. If you have Cam Akers, if you were one of those people that maybe you weren't even in that into him, but you ended up drafting him, yeah, you have no choice but to hold him and hope it gets better. Now the elephant in the room yep, this was the Allen Robinson uh, <sighs> fantasy line, one oh. for 12 on two targets. Uh, this game was brutal for Allen Robinson. Uh, like I said, Cooper Cup was the one player that did anything, 15 targets, we talked about it on Never Not Working yesterday, that five-target threshold. You want to see it. If you don't get it, it's a bad omen for you, yeah. for your season uh, result as a fantasy player. So I want to turn to you guys because okay. you guys were you know, with me on the Allen mm -hmm. Robinson train. And are you concerned or are you taking this in stride with, you know, if you want to say things on the defense of Allen Robinson side, you would say, Played every offensive snap except for two, mm -hmm. along with Cooper Cup. Mm -hmm. First actual game action with Matthew Stafford. They didn't play in the preseason together. Uh, so acclimation, game planning. You know, Sean McVay came out and said afterwards he wants to get Allen Robinson more involved in the offense. Which a reminder that Robert Woods had a little bit of a lull to start last year, and McVay came out and said, we got to get Robert Woods involved. And then, boom, Robert Woods was heavily involved where I will say is th this situation is it's impossible because everything that's going on right now. What was his stat line in week one last year? It was like five for 43 or something from uh, – it was Andy Dalton. Okay. It was like five for 26, five for six 43. For, six for 35 on 11 there targets. Okay, yeah. so he actually – okay, he had the targets, but I'm saying almost every argument of like – that's going to happen right now is exactly what happened last year. So it's, it is, and I had Robinson on my team. So like I am having deja vu in a really negative way of like, holy crap, here we, we're already starting right there. So it's almost impossible to emotionally, to not have an emotional reaction to this of what happened to me and what happened to my teams last year. Cause that, I mean, one, he had two targets technically. The second one was the the a target into the end zone at the very very end of the game, just just to end it. The fact that he wasn't even targeted when Cooper Cup got 15, which is fine. You okay? Cooper Cup's great. Tyler Higby got 11 targets, and I don't. So it's I don't know what happened where he wasn't even looking at Allen Robinson. But I am. There sh there honestly should be better days ahead. This this offense will get it figured out. But I am super freaked out and you 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 have to make a pretty clear decision very quickly on Robinson's future yeah I mean I, th I think brighter Which days is hard I think brighter days are ahead for him I think next week against Atlanta we're gonna find out everything because they're gonna try to get him more involved they're gonna be able to get him more involved if he has a bad game next week though is going to have been too late to sell him that's what if, I'm that's what I'm saying is you got to make your decision right now and like and that's not 
that's not what you want to be backed into in fantasy football. You want to be able to ride it out. But if you have two games in a row, yeah, no I one, no one's trading for him. I, I agree. Next week is huge for the Allen Robinson storyline. We don't want to take week one victory laps or concession speeches Absolutely. on players you have conviction about. The Rams are not going to score ten points every week. Correct. And uh, Matthew Stafford, I think a big part of it was he's on his back the whole game and. You know, these plays couldn't develop down the field. That was definitely a product of it. I'll say this. In that stat we brought up on Never Not Working last year, one of the cap... Last week. Last, uh, no, yes yesterday. yesterday. Yesterday, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mike, for correcting me with a slightly closer time frame uh, answer. In the grand scheme of time, I was way closer. You were way closer. Price I apologize. Right right. <laughs> I'll say this, though. One of the caveats that I, I don't remember if it was brought up was veterans getting a slower start to the year were an outlier of that group. Like Mike Evans has many years started with a bad week one. Michael Pittman last year had fewer than five targets in sure. week one with a new quarterback. So Carson Wentz was brand new to the Colts offense. Same situation for Robinson. I think you have every, you should be concerned yeah. with the usage, but you should be patient. And I don't think you're going to be, I mean, all the reasons that you brought up Mike about almost a post-traumatic stress reaction to Robinson last year are going to dissuade people from paying you any type of premium on Robinson. To me, if you want to bench him mm -hmm. and wait and see, that's fine. If you want to take the 65 snaps and say, well, you know, I, it's going to be better next week against Atlanta. That's an option for you. Uh, I certainly am not going to abandon my belief that he's going to be involved in. Cause if you do, you're also abandoning your belief that the Rams and Sean McVay knew what they were doing, right? They went out, Paid a ton of money for Allen Robinson, put him on the field. It was the first week together, so you get to make your conclusion out there. I will say this: it was it was the lowest target, uh, the 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 fewest targets in his career for any game. Other, it, so long as you take out the game, he only played five snaps in. Sure, um, that's a great debut. What yeah. a great debut! Oh man, <laughs> so it, I guess what it says is that the range of outcomes. Like I didn't see, like you know, in in whatever his game log will be throughout the season, I wouldn't have seen something... One catch. Yeah, this bad. No, I get it. I am curious. Comes down with that throw on the last play of the game. You sell him. <laughs> Do we have a conversation about Allen Robinson today? Uh, yeah, yeah, for oh, yes. sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, into the news we go. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Man, we have so much to talk about today. Uh, Ken Walker, another do not practice or did not practice. <laughs> do not. Do practice. not. No matter what you do. Uh, you shall not practice. <laughs> thank you, Gandalf. Uh, unlikely to play Monday night. Correct. Yeah. Uh, we have Chris Godwin expected to be a game game time decision for fantasy purposes. He's on your bench. I can't imagine starting him. Yeah, if he if he is active, he's on my bench. Alan Lazard didn't practice. Does yeah. not look like he's going to play either. Ugh. Michael Thomas, limited in practice on Thursday. Uh, Nick Underhill, trusted beat reporter out of uh, New Orleans. The way he's moving at practice, I'd be shocked if he didn't play. Okay. You play him? I am, yeah. Greg Roman said the that Baltimore would go with the hot hand at running back. J.K. Dobbins likely to miss. Hot hand has to be between Mike Davis and Kenyon Drake. I don't think so. I think the only hand that can get hot there is Lamar Jackson. Um, I mean, <laughs> what's what's Justice Hill's status? He is also recovering from that ACL, yeah. so I don't I don't know if he'll be active. Uh, I don't I doubt he'll be involved. I don't think anyone's going to get a hot hand. No, not unless they like put it on a stove. <laughs> I mean, that's this this is not the backfield for hot hands. Rondale Moore forced to miss Thursday's practice, hamstring injury, undergoing an MRI, and then Zach Ertz didn't practice. Uh, I have more confidence in Ertz playing just based on the way the team is talking about him. I think Rondale's out. Rondale's, I think this is a major injury. Yeah, I was going to say Rondale's gone for a while. He was uh, missing with, I presume, a hamstring injury. And then he came back and had a re-aggravation that sent him to an MRI. <clears throat> Not good for Rondale's outlook. AJ Green, anybody? Sure, I think week oh one, AJ Green, you're you're going to be down a it's lot. Be a shootout to the Chiefs, and you're going to be throwing the ball. I don't think it's going to be efficient, but if if AJ Green has ten targets, he's going to be fine for fantasy. What about Andy Isabella? Oh come on, I would 
go with the Dorch before I would go Isabella. George Kittle didn't practice again. Unlikely to play. What a disappointment. What a bummer if you finally were like, okay, we're going to start the season fresh. Yep. Uh, if you need a tight end, you could look at Njoku on the waivers, Irv Smith, Gerald Everett, uh, some other options out there. It's just crazy that all of these injuries we're talking about, these players that are all going to miss week one, happened after all of the football was done, the preseason mm -hmm. was over, and then it's like everyone's getting stepped on and pulling groins and hamstrings. It's just sad. I thought we made it through unscathed. Well, Chase Edmonds was upgraded to a full practice on Thursday. Okay, we got one. Are you? Uh, Jason's face did not say he's certain he's going to play. <laughs> well, I, I do think he's going to play. I am terrified of how he plays and whether he can re-aggravate the groin issue because reading about George Kittle... Ah, uh, my groin again. <laughs> yeah, re reading about George Kittle is basically saying, like, no matter what level of strain the groin injury is, it, it takes more than a week to recover from. And I don't know that they've given that to Chase Edmonds. He wants to prove himself. He wants that new contract after this one. And I uh, I just worry. I'm, I'm terrified because he's a my guy. All right. A reminder, the Injury Blitz podcast back today. Matthew Betts, our injury expert, uh, he brings that little bonus podcast to mm -hmm. you on jointhefoot.com. Check that out. That was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Back with the fantasy forecast in a minute. All right, yesterday on the show, we covered the Saints, Falcons, 49ers, Bears, Steelers, Bengals, Eagles, Lions, Patriots, Dolphins, Ravens, Jets, and the Jaguars Commanders game. We're back into the fantasy forecast. Fantasy forecast. We got eight games left to cover. We've got fantasy face off. Uh, supposedly the wheel of shame is, is, did we skip that today? Uh, I think, I think I want, I would like to do it today. No, would I you? would love to. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, I guess two thirds vote. We're going to, yeah, do it. I guess we're doing it. Uh, Cleveland. The Browns taking on the Carolina Panthers in Carolina, the DraftKings Sportsbook line. It's a pick em. The over-under is 42. So okay. this is going to be a pretty quick discussion on this yes, matchup. Yes, it is. Uh, you're not playing the quarterbacks. Correct. Uh, you're playing the starting running backs, Nick Chubb, Christian McCaffrey. DJ Moore is in there. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk about some decisions you have to make. Let's go Kareem Hunt, Amari Cooper, David Njoku. Thoughts on those three? Players. If you drafted David and Joku, I think this is a fine enough matchup. The Panthers, their one weakness last year on defense was the tight end, and so you're you're fine to start him. Um, Kareem Hunt, good flex play, but the Panthers, you know, front seven, their defense. Is Kareem good. Hunt or Melvin Gordon against the Seattle Seahawks. I would I'll play the matchup there and go Melvin Gordon. Okay. Are you going to be uh, holding your breath watching Christian McCaffrey in this in this matchup? Yes, all season long. Like, I feel like if it's week eight and he hasn't missed one snap, I'm still going to be going, uh, Man, don't if, get hurt. If you were on Twitter yesterday. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know. This clown show reporting just because it, it's this was this was intentionally trying to rile people up. We had boom. Christian McCaffrey came through uh, on the injury report with a shin and you're going. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you kidding me? And it was, he got cleated. What's he, wrong with your body? Yeah, he got a cut on the shin, so he's fine. But like, it just, it comes out, shin, injury. Like With Christian McCaffrey, we we don't need that in our lives right now, Twitter. Let's get It's a dangerous please. place right now. Please. Uh, all right, so Omari Cooper, are you willing to flex him? No. David and Joker, are you willing to? to give it a go in week yes. one. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, the Colts taking on the Houston Texans. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Indianapolis, seven-point road favorites. The over-under is 45.5 points. And uh, we're going we're going to get to see the Damian Pierce experience okay. with uh, superstar Jonathan Taylor on the other side. People are hyped, but should we temper those expectations? The Colts' defense, fourth against the run last year, giving up 17.9 fantasy points per game. People have decisions to make with Damian Pierce based on where they got him in their drafts. 
Yeah, I would prefer to wait and see. I mean, if you drafted very, very late, you know, last couple of days, last week, you might have drafted him where you need to start him. But I think a lot of people that drafted Damian Pierce have other options. Chase, Damian Harris. Damian Harris. Chase Edmonds. Chase Edmonds. Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Oh, okay. Uh, that I, was easy. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's kind of how I'm viewing Damian Pierce because this he's matchup. The, he's the no piercer. I do think he is the starter. He gets the first carry. He gets the majority of carry. He gets the lion's share of the carries here. But, Andy, you've brought this up before. When you're down uh, two scores early in the game, it doesn't matter how much you want to run the ball. You can't. And this is a tough defense to run on. If you're up, and they're not going to be up. The last two times these teams played, it was like 31-3 to three and 30,000 to nothing. It was just, they've been shellacked. That's a big lead. Yeah, it was a huge <laughs> lead. Biggest all time. But you're playing Brandon Cooks. Yeah, you, they're going to throw the ball. Nico Collins, flyer, emergency? Uh, he's fine to sit on your the bench. Answer's, the answer is no. I'm yeah. saying he's fine to sit on your bench and, and see how involved he actually is. Uh, I'm sure there are some people that wish they hadn't started started Matthew Stafford last night and yeah. that they could uh, maybe pivot to a streaming Matt Ryan against Houston. I'm sorry. Your league's not going to let you do that, but you can ask. This yeah. could be a strong start for Matt Ryan. Like you could have a very interesting waiver situation. Uh, the whole narrative of, do you buy into Matt Ryan succeeding on the Colts after this week? Michael Pittman. Yes, sir. You got to start Michael Pittman. Wait. Oh, look. go ahead, Mike. Oh, wait, it's still Andy? <laughs> oh, no. Good work, team. We got, we that, got I actually feel sad about that, yeah. as great as that was. Um, I mean, triggering weird lights. Oh, thank you. What? Thank it's you. Mike. Where, <laughs> come on. Where's mine? Yeah, all right. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All the <laughs> listeners really enjoying that. Uh, Naeem Hines. Uh, would you play him? I don't. Think. So I do think Naeem Hines is going to have a good season, and he'll be very involved. He projects to be a best friend of Matt Ryan in the play style yes, of this offense. So, uh, you know, I, Damian Pierce or Naeem Hines? I Pierce. would go Pierce. Okay, I just making sure. And and part of the problem here is that you know the passing game. I I like Matt Ryan. I love Michael Pittman, and I think Naeem Hines has a good season. I'm excited to see what Alec Pierce does. Um, and and of course, awful Tower. You know how involved. It's Paris Campbell. Paris Campbell. But this just doesn't project to be the game where you're going to get to see them in a situation where they need to throw it for four quarters. Mike's uh, Pity City shirt, by the way, is up on shopballers.com. It, it absolutely is. Is there a tank up there, too? Yes, there is. I got the tank version. I mean, when you see the shirt, oh, yeah. you'll realize you got to get the tank I got top the tank. version. I got the tank top. So I got my eyes on that. And then from this matchup. Guns out in the city? Yeah, of course. Suns are, the sun's out, man. You got to get. Got to flex on him. Your gun policy, uh, oh, <laughs> pity city, yeah, of course. Uh, what I'm looking at here, I'm not, I'm not starting Gigantor, Mo Ali Cox, and I'm not starting Brevin Jordan. But both of these guys are interesting. The, Just keep your eyes on them. Yeah, the, where let, let's see how many routes they actually go with. Like Mo Ali, Gigantor over on the Colts side, he's their guy. Like Jack Doyle has retired. He Mo Ali has the money. And the matchup against the Texans is actually pretty solid, 24th against fantasy tight ends. Meanwhile, the Colts were 27th against tight ends, and Brevin Jordan looks like a full-time player. I know they, they added O.J. Howard, but so just keep keep your eyes on these guys that they might be uh, hot waiver pickups. And then Jonathan Taylor in two games against Houston, 145 yards and two touchdowns, 143 yards and two touchdowns, so... Enjoy the week. Yep. The New York Giants are taking on the Tennessee Titans in Tennessee. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Tennessee minus five and a half. The over under is forty three and a half points. Um, this game is fairly straightforward from a fantasy perspective. You are going to start your running back, Saquon Barkley, despite Tennessee being pretty stout against the run. In fact, the most stout last year. Uh, I think you drafted, you know, you drafted Saquon to start him. And then Derrick Henry. The fantasy MVP, does he come out and show you what he's had the past few years? Oh, I hope so. Uh, I mean, you know, last year, I think he had a down week one, and then went yeah, completely... Yeah, it was, it was that super weird Cardinal game. Oh, that's right. They got shellacked by yes. the Cardinals week one, and then went super nuclear yeah. uh, the rest of the season. He went he, too hot because it broke his foot. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, this is the Giants D that isn't 
fantastic. They weren't great against the run last year, so obviously you're starting uh, Derrick Henry. I think you're just hoping that he picks up where he left off. Let's talk about the wideouts. Are there any wide receivers in this game that you are willing to put into your lineup? Right now, I believe the highest ranked on the week for us is Robert Woods at wide receiver 41. Uh, so we are uh, starting just, you know, part of this is for the fun of it. Um, currently, we are starting Sammy Watkins over Robert Woods. So that would we is you and Mike. Uh, yes. Yeah, Mike and I um, in one of our dynasty rosters and. So that would answer your question with a no. <laughs> We're not sure. starting anyone from this game. But I do think Kadarius Tony could have a good game. And if I was going to pick one player, he has he has missed a, a bit, but he was a full participant uh, over the you know the last few days. And I think that's if that good was, news. If that was part of the plan to just kind of bring him along slowly because of his injury history and kind of unleash him in week one. I won't be surprised if Kadarius Tony has a really big week one. Yeah, I, I just went in and adjusted the ranks of. I think Kadarius Tony is a fine flex. Christian or wide Kirk or Kadarius Tony? Kirk. Oh. Um, the t Titans defense last Kirk. year gave up 33.8 points per game to the fantasy wide receivers they faced. That is uh, second worst in the league. Yeah, like I'm, I'm happy to play Tony this week. I'm not. It's not a reluctant. Oh crap! I got to put a Giants wide out. And it's. I think Tony should have a very solid week. Wandale well, Robinson and Traylon Burks, two rookies. Uh, highly drafted will also be on display in this game, and somehow, some way, Sterling Shepard might play. It's going to be a game time decision. I'd be shocked, but yeah, at the well, same time, I've been shocked with every bit of his progress so far for this season. Achilles one, NFL players zero. Yeah, that sucks. It does. It sucks because you're just if that happens to you as a player, it's devastating. And not only is the road back so difficult, yeah. but and you did nothing wrong. Like, I mean, that, yeah, that's, it yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah. like your fault. You were trying to run in your Achilles pop. It's injuries like that. Freak they're injury. so sad. Uh, the Green Bay Packers traveling to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. The DraftKings Sportsbook yeah. line. Green Bay minus one and a half. The over-under is 47 in this game. Huge NFC North battle. And um, they play again. Their next matchup will be Week 17 in Fantasy Championships. So... <sighs> They split the series last year. The home team won every game. And the more beautiful thing for fantasy players, the last four Minnesota Green Bay matchups, they hit the over. And the over right now or the over under right now is at forty seven points. Please give us the over. Let's see some <laughs> fireworks in Minnesota. I think they, they could and they should. We're going to finally see the unleashing, the unveiling of the new Minnesota Vikings offense and how that plays for, you know, we know how it plays for Justin Jefferson, which is great because whatever offense he's in is going to be great. But the rest of the pieces, how does Adam Thielen fit into this new scheme? Does he take that big slot role a la uh, Cooper Cup? Mm -hmm. um, and, and Dalvin Cook, what, you know, does this open up lanes for him? Uh, fewer stacked boxes. I'm really, really excited uh, to see the Minnesota Vikings offense. If there was... This might be like the game I want to watch the most. Well, and the, the Packers defense, too, will be interesting to watch in this matchup, traveling on the road. They were pretty good against the run last year. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun one. Irv Smith, Mike, start of the week at the tight end position with an opportunity here against the 22nd-ranked tight end defense from last year, the Packers. On the other side of the ball, we're going to get to see how often Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon could potentially be on the field together, one of the signs of – uh, or one of the signals for enthusiasm around A.J. Dillon was the hope that these guys will both be out there a lot. And I think that if you're going to see it, uh, week one with no Alan Lazard, a.k.a. your wide receiver one, this is probably the time to do it. Both both of these running backs are in play this week. I mean, well, Aaron Jones is every week, but I'm saying like his ceiling this week, when, especially when it comes to receptions, is uh, is a top three play this week. From week six on last year, A.J. Dillon averaged 15 opportunities and 75 total yards a game, and Aaron Jones only missed one of those games. So uh, he will have opportunities. Lazard will likely sit, so you can throw your darts here in a game that should hit the over. Oh, man. Um, Randall Cobb and Sammy Watkins will be starting this game. Yeah, they will. Christian it's... Watson and Romeo Dubs should play. He, yeah, I mean that. But not on my fantasy roster. No, and, and that will be. That's a fascinating storyline to watch of Dobbs, who 
the lower draft capital pick, but tearing up uh, training camp, had a great preseason, and Christian Watson was hurt. So, I mean, and he's he, he's still listed as they are expecting him to play. So, I mean, I would imagine that Dobbs is starting this game. Man, I, I had to look this up because I'm, I'm, I'm realizing this game with a decent over-under that I think could hit the over without Alan Lazard. Aaron Jones right now, his, his line is four and a half receptions. I mean that he's going. He could double that. Could. I, I I mean he's going to have so many targets in this game. I'm super confident in that. All right. Anything else from this game you guys want to cover? Nope. All right. Moving on. The Kansas City Chiefs. This game's going to be fun. Kansas City traveling to Arizona. It's got a 54 point over under. Kansas City six point road favorites, but that still gives, you know, that puts the Chiefs at 30 points. The Cardinals at 24 points. And I think this game's going to be a shootout uh, through and through. Uh, the Chiefs have lost uh, Tyran Matthew. Last year, they struggled against wide receivers and opposing quarterbacks. They were second worst. They gave up 20 uh, points a game to the fantasy quarterback position. Uh, Arizona's defense was much better on that front, but this is Patrick Mahomes and company. So the hard part is Arizona is so depleted. Yep at skill positions that you do have confidence in that you want to start as many as you can, but it might come down to, you know, Kyler, Connor, and Hollywood. And then there Check. will be a couple other players that emerge, but you might not be able to predict who it is. If it's A.J. Green, if it's uh, Zach Ertz, if it's uh, one of the other running backs, Eno Benjamin or Daryl Williams. Or the Dorch. Um, Greg Dorch. No, I, I, I think the reality is there's three good options. You named them, and then you check out. Someone else will have value. Hollywood should have a great game. James Conner should have tons of u utilization. And Kyler is obviously going to be able to you know run his way, if the passing isn't there, to a solid fantasy uh, out outing. I don't think that he is going to be like a top three guy this week. I know the matchup looks good, looks juicy, but the lack of weapons we've seen in the past when he doesn't have Hopkins and uh, you know other weapons, it it gets it, it, he struggles a little bit more. Yeah, I think I I, I hear you. Uh, the Cardinals are three and zero against the spread in Week One games uh, under Kingsbury. Uh, they are the home team in this one. Jason, if you had to take a flyer, deeper multi flex league. AJ Green or Kadarius Tony, as we previously talked about. Ooh. I would. That's a great question. I would go Kadarius Tony. I think that the safer option is not Tony, but the you know, if you're, it, it depends. If you're trying to build a certain type of lineup, then you know maybe you go safe. But I don't think the f the safe floor is enough from AJ Green to play him in my lineup over other exciting options. Yeah, uh, AJ Green last year had basically four playable games. Only one 100 yard game last year. And uh, the other ones were touchdown dependent. The Cardinals defense was good against quarterbacks, running backs, and tight ends last year, but bad against wide receivers, which makes this all the more difficult. As we look at the Kansas City side, you have a lot of options at wide receiver. You know that w probably two of them are actually going to give you fantasy-worthy starts. But is it Juju? Is it MVS? Is it Sky Moore? Is it McCall Hardman? I think week one is Juju. Uh, Juju projects to be the number one. Uh, he, you know, I think as the season goes along, I worry how the knee is going to do, but right now he's as well rested as he will be until the next bye week at the very least. So that's, that's my reason for projecting him to be the pass catcher you want. I think they're, they're both in play, uh, I, being MVS. Yeah. Yeah. Juju and MVS. Uh, I, the, my, my only argument here for going with Valdez Scantling would be, Watching the Cardinals secondary get torched by deep plays, big plays, and that that's MVS in this offense. So the, I mean, if he finishes with a line of two for sixty and a score, that will not be shocking to me. Uh, the Clyde Edwards Lair experience continues. <laughs> not flashy no. flex start, Clyde Edwards Lair, yeah, and then I'm, Kelsey's I'm always in your lineup. Mahomes, if you drafted him to be your quarterback, you're, you're playing certainly him. playing him. And uh, Andy Reid historically gets his guys ready for week one. Kansas City has scored, uh, oh gosh, since 2018, 38, 40, 34, and 33 points. So yeah, I think that's going to come close again. The Cardinals defense has lost uh, its its pass rush. And yeah, J.J. Watt is hurt. 
JJ Watt is hurt. Chandler Jones is gone. Yep. Um. Uh, you know we are depleted in the secondary. Yep. Our cornerbacks are non-existent. So uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, I think, are going to have a great game. Not so much the Cardinals. <laughs> the Las Vegas Raiders taking on the Los Angeles Chargers. In Los Angeles, the DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Chargers minus three and a half at home. The over-under is 52 and a half. All right. Let me give you a uh, moment to react to that line. Would you have expected the Chargers to be more heavily favored in this matchup at home with the expectations going into the year? I don't think so. In division, you've got the Raiders who have upgraded their team dramatically. Mm -hmm. uh, the Raiders, you know, handled the Chargers last year. Uh, and this is the game I want the most uh, because – Unlike the Chiefs and the Cardinals, I think it's going to be a little bit more lopsided. This game, I think the Raiders can keep up. And I think that, the, you know, it's going to go back and forth. I want pretty much every relevant player on on both sides of the ball here. The quarterbacks, uh, Justin Herbert, obviously you drafted him to be your star. And they've gone all in since drafting him to protect him with this offensive line. Uh, first round guard pick. Uh, this past year and then last year really beefing it up Herbert will have his opportunities in this game Austin Eckler you're starting Keenan Allen Mike Williams they're in there mm -hmm. Jason you mentioned Gerald Everett on yesterday's show if you missed that they're not going to have Donald Parham in this game Everett coming over from uh, Seattle and the Raiders very vulnerable against opposing tight ends you're you're looking at him as a potential uh, Jim. Yeah, he's going to be on the field pretty much every single play of the game, and the matchup is great. The over under is good. I mean, if he if he projects to have a touchdown, this is the game he projects to do it in. In Joku or Everett, if you're pivoting from Kittle, I lean Everett. I lean in Joku. Yeah, that's tough. But I mean, I can see the argument for both. I think in Joku will have more targets, it, and that's why I go. With and him. Everett will have a higher probability of a touchdown. Uh, the other side of the ball, Josh Jacobs' confidence going into week one. Uh, not not very high. I mean, we, we we have no idea how exactly how this running back room is going to break down. I mean, you can you can guess that we have Jacobs on the early downs and Abdullah taking up passing work, but then they've added Zamir White, uh, who looks like I mean. Well, he'll just take Josh Jacobs' work throughout the year, and it seems like the team really likes him. Brandon Bolden brought over from the Patriots. Is he playing on third downs? Is he just a special teams guy? There's there's so much mystery in here, which, I mean, that's where you can really extract value in the ambiguous running back rooms, but I'm not sure that this is the one with, with how ambiguous it is and how many different pieces it could be uh, that's – it scares me off of playing Jacobs if I can get away with I'm it. I'm more confident than you and Jacobs because of the talent. Uh, I think that will win out over, you know, the the third-day rookie, Zamir White, and he'll get the lion's share of the work. I just said, you know, I want most of the pieces in this game, so I'm going to bet on Jacobs' talent to win out. I would play him over Rashad Penny. I would play him over uh, Chase Edmonds. I think you know he's not a must start guy, but some of those flex options, I'm not, I'm not as down on Josh Jacobs for this. Are we matchup. all going to look stupid with Hunter Renfro? Yes, hundred percent. As in, he was drafted too late. Yes, he's going to be, he's going to be so solid every single week. Okay, so over Brandon Ayuk this week. Oh, George Kittle's out. Yeah, with, with Kittle out, I'd play Ayuk over Olave in his rookie. Yeah, debut. I'd play him over Olave over Robert Woods. Yes. yes. Okay. And then Devontae Adams, we get to see him in a Raiders uniform. Darren Waller, you know, at least last year the Chargers struggled against tight ends. Darren Waller, you drafted him to be your tight end. You're going to hope he is heavily involved and healthy and able to The healthy is my pay concern. dividends. I'm just so like I still have I don't know what percent of me, you know, twenty five percent of me is still worried if he comes out and like it is not healthy or is you know seems like he's good jason i, I think I, he's gonna be all right buddy a, yeah it's the minority you know percentage but i we, we just a little we hope that the holdout was all um contract related and not injury related but if it was injury related there's a good chance he could come back out re-aggravate whatever kept him out that long oh well maybe this will help <laughs> goo -goo -goo it does help that Does makes he feel me feel a little bit better more excited more confident yeah uh sunday night football 
the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Dallas Cowboys. Did you guys see the Michael Jordan promo for this game? I saw there was one, but I did not watch I it didn't. yet. It was fabulous. Is he hyping up Tom Brady? Yeah, and he was making a joke about, like, I stayed retired for two years and he couldn't even make it two months. <laughs> mm. uh, but, you know, goat, talking about goat. All right. So goat on goat. <laughs> That doesn't sound good. <laughs> no. Uh, Tampa Bay taking on Dallas. The DraftKings Sportsbook line. Tampa Bay minus two and a half on the road. The over-under is 50 and a half. Uh, it was great, right, Kyle? The little Michael Jordan? Commercial was great. Yeah, thank you. Probably wouldn't describe it the same way I did. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last year, it was a week one matchup between these two teams. Tampa Bay won at 31 to 29. That was a great game. Man, Dallas was... Was that close to thirteen and three last year? Yeah. Wow. And they're gonna uh, get shellacked in this game at home. I what? You, Jason is like weird, man. He is just so anti Dallas this year. It's it's un it's very bizarre. Because uh, it's because I no, it's because they dumped Amari Cooper. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> and Jason is just the die hard I love Amari, Amari Cooper, Cooper stand and he can't let it go. There's no other explanation because Jason was down on them before the injury to Tyron Smith. Yes. Well, but that, And then compounded by the injury. Exactly. But I, I am going to completely connect it to Amari Cooper because that is yes. more entertaining yeah, to me. Yeah, don't that's fun. And and that's fine. But while you connect it to Amari Cooper, connect it to Michael Gallup, connect it to Cedric Wilson, connect it to uh, Tyron Smith. Didn't know you were such a big Cedric Wilson guy. I'm just saying that I, I don't care about Cedric Wilson unless you lose all the other people in front of him. And so my point here is I just worry. We just saw what happens last night when you lose a left tackle and you go up against a good pass rush. You yeah. don't have time to throw the ball. And that's what's going to happen to Dak. He's, okay. I, I just feel like he's going to have a hard time throwing the ball against this. Is, is Jason defense. Peters good to go? No, he's signed to the practice squad. Okay. So he's working his way back to football shape. Probably okay. he's 40, week, right? Yeah, probably week yeah. three or so. Never, he'll, he'll make his Never debut. gets smaller, though. I'm, I'm guessing that <laughs> oh, part will work for just, him. He's a, he's a big man. He's a big boy. I think that's the secret to great left tackles. Just draft the guys who are actually yeah, Whitworth, giants. Whitworth is just giant, he's and he's, just, he could be as old as you want. <laughs> It's He's still going like, to be in the way. If you park a semi truck on the left <laughs> side of the le of the line, you get time. Like you got to run all the way around this. You got to run around the semi. You're right. <laughs> this is good thinking. Yeah. The bigger you can find. Uh, all right. Well, there are question marks on both sides of the ball. It's not like Dallas is the only team going through transitional issues on the offensive line. Tampa has significant issues on the offensive line. And you're going to have to deal with a pass rush in Dallas that's going to be ferocious. And Tom Brady, on the road, where he was only 19 fantasy points a game last year, will have challenges. No Chris Godwin likely in this game. Julio Jones is brand new to the offense. And so, yeah, I mean, if you need a counterpunch, that's the counterpunch. That's a great counterpunch. Like, if Dallas wins this game, I think it will be because of their defense. Uh, the, the, this, you know, Both teams kind of are are struggling on the offensive line and are facing really good, solid defenses. I'm not saying Dallas as an entire front-to-back team is bad. I'm just saying that this matchup on offense for fantasy scares me and is and is poor. Would it scare you enough to sit any of the kind of known commodities here? I mean, Fournette, Zeke, uh, Brady and Dak, Evans and Lamb are all in there. Dalton Schultz, I assume, is in there. Yeah, I mean, I, every single one of those you have to start. You drafted them where you need to start, and they're, they – you know, the nice thing is with Fournette, with Zeke, the volume should be there even if the efficiency is not. So I don't think they're going to have horrible fantasy games. Is Gallup, does he have a chance of playing in this no, game? No, no, he's already ruled okay. out. Okay. I don't yeah. know why I saw him as questionable. In no, game. he's he's ruled out. Um, For Zeke, uh, he, as long as he gets some receptions in this game, he'll be okay. I mean, he, it, it was a rough week one last year for him. And I expect it to be a tougher game. Like I'm not expecting top 15 Zeke this particular week. All right, gentlemen. I know it took us a long time to get here. I mean, I almost ran out of time to hit my button. But the Denver Broncos on Monday <laughs> oh, Night no. Football traveling to Seattle. Oh, no. Oh, man. <laughs> the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Denver minus six and a half. The over-under is 45 points. Gentlemen, oh, I promised it. Okay. Andy's almost upset of the week. Now, now to give you mad dap, you have been great with these, and you have done them very well historically. When it shocks me, 
but this one's insane. <laughs> <laughs> this, this one's insane. What? Seattle cannot hang with the Broncos in the slightest. Well, we'll find out. Uh, I think, uh, look, it's an almost upset. I said I thought this game would be very, very close. Yeah, well, you guys I, think it'll be a blowout? All they have to do is lose by fewer than six points, and it's almost an upset. Well, certainly the way you reacted, it would be, because you are expecting it to be a bloodbath in Seattle for the Broncos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I want to be kinder with my words, but. But then that would be a lie. Yeah. So. Yeah. So obviously the Broncos defense was pretty formidable last year. They had Russell Wilson. We have a start of the week, uh, the Javante Melvin combo because the Seattle run defense struggled tremendously last year. And then Russell Wilson was Jason start of the week at quarterback. Uh, we'll get to see the Cortland Sutton experience. Um, you know, hopefully it is what we expect it to be. Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler. You know, there are, Really strong starts mm -hmm. uh, for the Broncos side of the ball. And then on the other side, you're looking at Rashad Penny as the starter. Uh, end of the year, absolutely on fire as a top five type of running back. So I think you can put him in there. I do too. And uh, Geno Smith will be the quarterback. And then DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. You know, let's go back to that comp of Kadarius Tony or I'm sure you're playing DK Metcalf over Kadarius Tony, but what about Tyler Lockett? Yeah, I would. I, th th that's exactly right. It would go DK Metcalf, Kadarius Tony, Tyler Lockett. Uh, that's you're, you're. I'm betting on talent in that situation because none of those three guys have a great outlook, great quarterback situation, a perfect matchup. So I'm going to just take who's the, you know, the 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 order of player talent, and that's not to take anything away from Tyler Lockett. I've been a Tyler Lockett truther for years. I think he's great, but where he excels uh, I think matched Russell Wilson a little bit better than Geno Smith all right that concludes the matchups but not the show because we have another segment fantasy face-off presented by DraftKings against my will we have another segment because we faced off in the Matchup last night. We mm -hmm. did. And uh, everything was going swimmingly. Mike had, oh, I agree. Front. Mike had the big the big win last night. He had Gabe Davis as his captain. Start to finish. It was just, it was a. Mike was in control. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Jason and I, we were neck and neck battling. I had Josh Allen as my captain. You had Isaiah McKenzie. And it came down to one play. It came down to everything looking pretty good. Jason had already done his little traditional pre-concession speech on our Slack channel mm -hmm, saying, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to be shamed. It's over. It's, it's done. Yep. And then Stefan Diggs cut a bomb touchdown later, which was able, he was able to be in my lineup because of the cheap captain versus, uh, you know, you couldn't work him into your lineup and the points were great. So, uh, 109 to 104, Jason beat me by five. Oof. And so it's my turn. Wheel of Shame. <laughs> yeah, I, I super love this. It's great. Uh, let's spin that Wheel of Shame and decide what... It's great when it's not you. It is so it's really fun. fun this, yeah. this segment is really so fun. We got Yar Matey, Geezer, and the winner is... The crybaby. Ooh. Great. That's going to be some sort, yeah. of, some sort of mask I have to wear on the, uh, the, to, in the public. The crybaby is coming. <laughs> the crybaby is coming oh, through. Oh, yeah. This uh, is suffocation might, happening. I want to take that, uh, the hat off there. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> oh, baby. Uh, I mean. If this couldn't better some. Can you hear me? Oh, we oh, can yeah, hear you. Loud yeah. and clear. Uh, oh, yeah. This summarizes about how I felt with the Allen Robinson situation. <laughs> Wait, is there a like, there, there's a there's, little bit of a breathing hole? There's a little bit of tears on there too. Yeah, All right, yeah, yeah. it makes sense. Very uh, good. Whether I can read my roster that we're going to share on this segment, I don't know. Good luck. Um, <laughs> but as we head into week one, <laughs> the deucers are losing. The it. deucers are. Oh losing. man, I look ridiculous. You, yeah. <laughs> this is exactly how I felt. This should just be the punishment every week. We're kicking this one off well. All, All right. right, so week one, we'll be facing off. <laughs> and hopefully I'm not wearing this again. All right, somebody else talk. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll kick it off here for this. Uh, at the quarterback position, I have my start of the week, Lamar Jackson at 7,300. I think that he uh, 
He probably doesn't un- end up as the number one guy now after what Josh Allen did uh, on Thursday. <laughs> Uh, I can but, barely breathe. But for seventy three hundred, what the ceiling is for Lamar is uh, against the Jets. I'm in. Jay, who you got? Uh, at I have, I have my my guy Jalen Hurts going up oh. uh, to Detroit. I think he's going to show off all the new weapons that he has and his legs. He's sixty eight hundred in salary, <laughs> so he wasn't he wasn't breaking the bank to still legs. to still have uh, what I think has you know top five upside. Uh, the humidity in here is intense. Uh, <laughs> Justin Herbert is my starter at Ooh. the quarterback position. Uh, he is 7,600. He's in that matchup at home against the Las Vegas Raiders. I think that's a shootout potential game. And it's nice. We all have different quarterbacks. Yeah. At running back, I have Christian McCaffrey at 8,500. When when CMC is 8,500, I feel like you gotta get, you got to get in on that before he shoots up to the 10K mark. Uh, and then I also have Joe Mixon who right now on on uh, the DK Sportsbook, he is like minus 155 to score. As in, they are projecting that a touchdown is coming for Mixon and his over-under yardage is sitting at 89.5, and, and I'll take the over. Yeah, I have Christian McCaffrey as well. Yeah, uh, okay. In the DK Sportsbook, he has the highest over-under of receptions in the game. Not for running backs, but of all players in the game. Makes sense. So, uh, full PPR format. I'm going to take McCaffrey. I'm going to take Austin Eckler and hope that uh, your Herbert is passing Ooh. the ball to Eckler. Well, I have Eckler as well, but never no mind. McCaffrey. Oh, wait. So, I do have Eckler at 8,200. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part is between. Did you say you have McCaffrey? I said I do not have McCaffrey. Oh, so who, who's your other running back? DeAndre Swift. Oh, okay. At home against Philadelphia, 6,800. At wide receiver, I will be siphoning some of Jason's points because I have A.J. Brown at 6,400. I have Elijah Moore at 5,100 in that Jets game to uh, kind of counterbalance Lamar Jackson, what I think is going to happen. And then, I mean, he's 5,500, man. Michael Pittman. There is no way anyone doesn't have Michael okay, Pittman on their roster. We all got him in Andy, there. you yes, have him? I have Michael okay. Pittman. So okay. we all have Michael Pittman. I also have Elijah Moore. I think that he's a great play at 5,100. So Mike and I, we've got that. The difference between Mike and I is going to be uh, decently significant here because I'm going from your A.J. Brown to my Randall Cobb, who is 3,400. He is the super affordable uh, player to have this week. I will tell you, I have Randall Cobb in my flex. As do I. So, so we all have Randall Cobb. <laughs> Uh, my wide receivers, A.J. Brown as well, Mike. Michael Pittman as well. And then I'm going with Hollywood as my third wide receiver. Yeah. My tight end is Johnny Smith at 2,800. And my defense, the Eagles at 3,100. Yeah, uh, my tight end, I got Cole Camo. Cole Komet, if you are not, uh, if you didn't listen to yesterday's show, he's sitting at 3,700. And my flex is Cobb. And then I went with the Dolphins. I penny pinched at the defensive position, 2,600. But I'm gonna, they're at home, and I'm, we're going to see – is the is what's the truth about that Patriots offense? Is it as bad as we've been told? And I have Kokomo as all well, right, right. and the Dolphins as well. Oh my gosh, are you serious? I am serious. But in my flex, I have Saquon Barkley, who should okay. catch a ton of passes. So I went with three pass catching running backs for the full PPR format. He was sixty one hundred. It was I was between Hollywood and Saquon, so that was that was a that'll be really heartbreaking to me win Hollywood outscore Saquon. That was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code BALLERS to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. One of the toughest decisions with this mask, gentlemen, <laughs> is whether I want to you look primarily great. look through the nasal passages or ah, through the eye passages. I would just close your eyes. Yeah. yeah. Close your eyes and weep. That is going to do it for today's show, Mike. Why don't you <laughs> tell everyone goodbye? <laughs> hey, I'll see you on Sunday for the live and enjoy the football, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.